And now, here is the host of Turning Point, Dr. David Jeremiah. If you were to search the content of all the major media streams over the last two decades for phrases like new world order, global government, or one world system, you would be shocked. Many of the politicians and leaders of developed nations have used these or similar phrases in their responses to recent global problems and catastrophes. The world is crying out for a unified government to solve problems at the global level. Careful students of scripture will recognize that a global human government is not part of God's plan. Today, I continue in my new teaching series based on my latest book, The Coming Economic Armageddon, with a message about the new world order. In our next few minutes together, I'll explain the biblical principle that a global government violates and why it will never succeed when tried. So please join me for this important message on today's edition of Turning Point. What is there about a new world order that unifies the minds of thinkers and scientists and presidents and politicians and religious leaders? Economist and best-selling author Larry Bates writes, I have said for many years that the term new world order is merely a code word for one world socialism. As many have observed, the new world order is not new, nor is it orderly. <laughs> It is old. It is built on a foundation of chaos and confusion that is as old as history itself. In fact, the first appearance of the New World Order is found in the book of Genesis. I've called this the ancient appearance of the New World Order. It is in the 11th chapter of Genesis that we encounter this first attempt of a New World Order. The post flood civilization after Noah's flood is described as possessing a unity of language a natural nomadic element that caused them to journey from place to place and at last according to the text they came to the land of Shinar which we are told was a very fertile land it is the place where Iraq is today it is the historic place of Babel and the Bible says they decided to dwell there and if you've read Genesis 11, you know that soon the leaders of this first new world order decided to build a tower to celebrate their unity and their power. This picture on the screen is, a, obviously they didn't take pictures back then. So this is a painting by a man named Peter Bruegel who conceptualized the kind of tower they probably built. And this is, this is probably very close to what they attempted to build. The two idols of their heart in Genesis chapter 11 were security and significance. The security to control their circumstances and the significance of creating a city and tower that would magnify their name. This was an act of rebellion against God whose purpose concerning the nations is spelled out in Acts chapter 17. You know, God established the nations after the flood. And these people got together and they defied God. It was their purpose to come together in a new world order and literally to build a tower that reached to the heavens. What was wrong with it? Well, Paul answered that question for us when he spoke to the Athenians in Acts chapter 17. I never really saw the significance of this passage before. But listen to what he said in Acts 17, 26, and 27. And God has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth. And God has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each of us. God scattered men and set the boundaries of their habitation, according to Paul, so that men would seek after God. But the people of Babel decided not to seek after God. They decided to seek their own self-interest, and relying on their own powers, they would reach up to God. 
This original New World Order was driven by pride and self-sufficiency and fear and rebellion. It was a clear echo of Satan's ambition as described by Isaiah. I will ascend into heaven, said Satan. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. The men and women of the Babylonian culture, the first New World Order, decided to defy God's separation of the nations and come together and build their own world and become their own God. And God knew that this first attempt to build a new world order would succeed beyond the wildest dreams of its founders. And the danger of such a plan to future generations and the threat of this man-made order to the people of faith was so great that God determined to shut it down in its inception. And I love the way Eugene Peterson describes what happened as he paraphrases Genesis chapter 11. Here's what he says. God came down to look over the city and the tower those people had built. And God took one look and he said, one people, one language. Why, this is only a first step. No telling what they'll come up with next. They'll stop at nothing. Come, we'll go down and garble their speech so they won't understand each other. Then God scattered them from there all over the world, and they had to quit building the city. That is how it came to be called Babel, because God turned their language into Babel. And there God scattered them all over the world. Prophecy student David Brees has written, I think we need to understand, people, that political internationalism is not the will of God. Nationalism is God's will. God believes in the sovereignty of nations. And he has ordained individual nations and not a complex of nations. When men try in their own unregenerate power to put together a complex of nations and make them cohere without God, then you have built into the complex the seeds of its own destruction. And that's exactly what will happen to the future world order that men are working on now. So now let me tell you about a modern attempt at a new world order. Our current attempt at a new world order is symbolized by the United Nations, headquartered in New York City. Within the United Nations Security Council, which is primarily responsible for maintaining the peace and security of member nations, is an immense stained glass window. The creation of artist Marc Chagall. It's called the peace window. And the window is divided into two spheres by the tree of the Garden of Eden. <laughs> At the bottom, close to the tree's root, is the snake, while the cross of Christ is depicted at the top right center in the corner. Chagall reportedly took his inspiration for this masterpiece from the Bible. But for all of its good intentions, the United Nations, since its inception, has been an example of bureaucracy run amuck. It is overrun with fraud and pointless debates and international mismanagement and ludicrous behavior. When Hugo Chavez, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, and Muammar Gaddafi are invited to hold court in the General Assembly as they did recently, one could hardly consider the UN to be serious about world peace. <laughs> 